Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do. We've got Matt Iglesias on. He's going to give his assessment of the Biden transition thus far. We've got Orrin Cass on. He's going to do a little bit of a Donald Trump postmortem and where the GOP goes from here. We've got a great panel, Chuck Rocha and Philip Wegman. But we wanted to start with Hunter Biden. That's right. Got a little bit of a press release yesterday from Hunter himself. He finally speaks, this time even through the campaign. Let's throw this up there on the screen from CNN. Hunter has revealed that there is a federal criminal investigation into his tax affairs. And further reporting reveals that federal authorities are now, quote, actively investigating the business dealings of Hunter Biden and that these focus on his business dealings in China. Now, Ben Schreckinger, who's another reporter, respect who's over at Politico, he's tracked the Biden family now for quite a long time, says that they are also looking into foreign ties, possible money laundering, that this could be connected as well to the Southern District of New York's unit of securities fraud, which is working with the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office, which is what probed Hunter, and meanwhile, quote, as part of the federal criminal investigation, a hospital chain linked to Joe's brother, Jimmy Biden. The FBI has also been asking questions. So a lot of the stuff that we talked about here on the show um, in the year preceding, which we were told was Russian propaganda. It was and debunked, so much more debunked no here. And all that. Oh, it's like totally 100 percent true. And the FBI was investigating it. They had to go, quote, covert because they didn't want to influence the election. Something I actually support, by the way, after yeah. what happened with James Comey True. and all of that. But yeah, they've been looking into this for two straight years, ever since Peter Schweitzer's book came out about Hunter's dealings. And here's the thing. If you actually care about restoring the mm -hmm. soul of the nation, if you actually care about having a democratic administration that helps to restore trust in government, this is a disaster. Yeah. It's a complete disaster. And, by the way, a completely preventable disaster. Starting in the Democratic primary, there was no one on the stage who was willing to challenge Joe about any of this personal corruption. Whether or not it is legal or illegal, that part we don't know. But we do know that there was clear use of the family name oh, yeah. to trade in no and for question. money and power and prestige around the world. That was clear and everyone wanted to walk on eggshells and not say it during the Democratic primary. The media has run cover for him from day one. And again, this isn't some like vicious smear attack against Joe Biden. It's just saying, do your job. Like this type of issue was something that the American people should have understood yes. was a liability for Joe Biden going in. And you know what? There's a good chance they would have voted for him anyway because they liked the alternative. It wasn't. And that's fine. Out. That's yeah. completely fine. But the efforts I'll never forget in the run up to the election. Anytime you said anything about Hunter or about his brother or the family dealings with the corruption overseas, there was this whole diatribe about this has been completely debunked and this bears all the hallmarks of Russian, Russian misinformation propaganda. and propaganda. Of course, you remember the whole situation with the laptop, which they never even denied the veracity of the emails, but we weren't supposed to talk about for, mm. at all because why? Because they just didn't want to actually deal with the facts of the case and every media reporter was terrified, terrified that they would be smeared as being the ones that caused Donald Trump to get elected again. So they didn't touch it. And now here, surprise, surprise, he's under investigation and it looks fairly serious. None of it was unproven. In fact, there seems to be a lot more than we even know. They're looking into, Hunt, remember, hunters, they only informed him about his taxes, as in whenever they come out into the open and they're willing to actually ask somebody, there is a lot more stuff here that they're looking at behind the scenes. And this is what, we tried to say here for so long, which is that this was obviously, from the very beginning, an influence operation by the Chinese government, the Russian government, oligarchs all across the world. I'm not limiting to one thing. This is what they do to the political elite. They use the political elite's connections Just to Wall Eric Street Swalwell. and to, yeah, ask <laughs> Eric Swalwell, right? I mean, they take the political elite. They're like, those people need money. China's got a lot of money. And so they use it along with 
oligarchs in Kazakhstan and Romania and Russia. This is a time-honored tradition exploiting Americans, the American elite's love of money, connections to Wall Street, and the political establishment. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it was all laid out in a clip that we showed you here a couple of days ago from Chinese professor Di Dongsheng when he specifically mentions how China helped hunters, he calls it his foundation, um, and his connections, and how they're going to leverage that political elite in order to control the Biden administration. Let's take a listen to that again. Biden 所以这个是... The knowing applause there from the audience, like yeah. the laughing and the knowing yeah. applause from the audience really says it all. Like, it's totally clear it's to right them there. how this yeah. works, yeah, you know? They, know? they they know America better than we know America. They're like, oh, yeah, just get all the rich people and they control the politicians. It's easy. It's, it's just out there completely in the open. And friend of our show, Glenn Greenwald, he had a great post on this. Let's throw this up there on the screen. How the Hunter Biden criminal... Po- uh, probe actually bolsters that clip about Beijing's influence within the Biden administration. And, you know, Joe has said, oh, well, Hunter's now not going to pursue any deals. I mean, look, as we all know, this is about who already has your phone number. By the time you get into power, it's too late, usually. That's why they cultivate people for years whenever they come up, like a certain congressman who's coming up in Eric, California named Eric Swalwell, so that whenever they do get elected, that you take the phone call. He's got business connections all over China that are connected to the CCP, to the one of the largest energy corporations there in the world. Same thing in Russia. It's and not he's just still involved China. in that deal in China, by he, the way. This never- is yes. This is another thing. The media is like, oh, he's totally exonerated. No. All he did was resign from a board seat on a $1.5 billion Chinese private equity fund. He still owns 10% of the fund. He's still He's in a never position divested. to financially benefit, yes. which is really the issue. To the tune of billions of dollars. Once again, $1.5 billion. I don't know what they've invested in, except for one thing, according to our friend Li Fang, that fund actually backed an app which they are using to basically enslave Uyghur Muslims in, right. in Western China. Great stuff. So thank you for investing in that company. Um, to Hunter Biden. It, again, you know, this is so out there. It's completely in the open. They're investigating it. We'll see exactly how this comes up. But it's even more important what you said about the whole back to normal and restoring this. Yeah. This is back to normal because now we're going to have a goddamn circus again here in Washington, which is that everything is going to get leaked and politicized from this investigation. Yeah. The Republicans, you know, that we're going to have like Benghazi, like 4.0 hearings or whatever that's going to happen. It's going to drag out. There's going to be a special prosecutor. And then Biden, as we know, is completely obstinate whenever it comes to any of this. He's like, I son did nothing wrong. Even though Hunter's like, yeah, I kind of did something wrong. And, and it's just, it's going to be four years of more nonsense. Essentially, I wouldn't say Mueller level because the media won't, will always just be trying to disprove it. But it's it's still just going to be, it's going to be like white water all right. over again during the Clintons. Well, and, and who needs that? I mean, Trump yeah. is like, uh, let's always yeah. be like Trump completely corrupt, profiting off the presidency, his kids, everyone around him trading in mm-hmm. on their access to him. Like, there's zero doubt about that. But there's a particular problem for Joe Biden because he basically, he didn't run on policy. He didn't really run on an agenda. Yeah. He ran on his personal mor- moral virtue. Like, that was what he offered up to the country. That's what the restore the soul of the nation messaging was all about. Well, that's fine. And you know what? We could use some of that. If that means rebuilding trust in government, I mean, personally, I thought it was sort of squishy BS and it's not really, yeah. you know, not really my cup of tea. But OK, if that's your thing, you better have a really strong leg to stand on. And if your own affairs are not in order and you got a whole circle of family members cashing in on the family name in gross deals that could influence how you ultimately conduct U.S. foreign policy in the world, that is a really, really terrible way to start your administration. And keep in mind, look, the way corruption usually works, it's not usually like directly handing yes. over a bag of cash it's and let me get this in exchange. Yeah. 
it's creating these ties so that you kind of feel bad if you're going to do something that's going to hurt these people you know, or feel bad if it's going to hurt your son and his business prospects. These are very human things that are actually really hard to guard against, even if you have the best possible of intentions, which, you know, does Joe Biden have the best possible intentions? I don't know, but that's kind of irrelevant. It's just the nature of the way human beings operate. And I would actually submit based on what we know about how Joe Biden operates. Who's he putting in his cabinet? Yes. It's all his friends, his acquaintances. People are friends with Bo. People have personal family relationships, people he feels comfortable with. That's who's in his inner, inner, inner circle, is people who have been in his life and advising him for years and years and years to include his sister. We know how he operates in terms of foreign policy. It is very mm-hmm. much about, in, in a very Trumpian way, actually, who he has personal rapport with rather than any kind of ideological outcome. So I would submit that someone who orients themselves in that way, much more based on personal relationships, it probably is more susceptible to corruption. Yeah, and I hate to go here, but look, if you, we talked a lot about Compromat, right? Whenever <laughs> in the last four years. Yeah, and com- well, but that's true. Look, Hunter was a drug addict, and he was using a lot of this stuff in order to finance. And we know, according to that Senate Intelligence Committee report, that there was a lot of compromising stuff that he was doing in Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe, Eastern Europe maybe even in China. And maybe, I mean, look, if it even enters Biden's mind, which is that, oh, well, if I need to put sanctions on the Chinese government in order for X, and they, look, you know, these people have a lot of information on a lot of people that they do business with and that they uh, go into, you know, that they personally have files on, same in Russia. I mean, they're famous, you know, for doing stuff like this, as we learned so much, even though nothing ever materialized with Trump. It's very possible that it has with Hunter. And if it, and again, maybe he still does it. But if it even enters the mind, that's a problem. Yeah. And and that's what you're pointing to, which is that it's a human thing. He's a dad. I don't blame the guy. I would want to protect my son. But when you're the president and the national affairs become your consideration, right. that is when it becomes the issue. It's very easy yeah. for humans to genuinely convince themselves that the thing that's like in their best interest of themselves and their family is also the right thing. Mm-hmm. And that's the way this type of low-level like subtle long-term corruption operates so that many times the people who are engaging in the corrupt action, they may not even know that they've been influenced and impacted in this way because we're very good at convincing ourselves, no, no, this was the right course of action. And it just so happens that it's also good for my son and doesn't hurt him here. Look, my whole point with all of this is that People should have known that this was a real risk going in. And I would say, you know, the the small details of the investigation that we have at this point, as you said at the beginning, indicates that the situation with Hunter is even worse than we expected. Because you and I both kind of mm. thought, look, what we know is this is likely legal, but sketchy. Yeah. Now not, not the question legal. is, yeah. actually, this may have not even been legal. This may have been completely illegal. There may have been money laundering going on. There may have been tax evasion going on. There may have been all kinds of illegal foreign activities. We don't know. Those are all allegations at this point. But that is, in fact, exactly what's being investigated. People should have known that in advance. And it's a complete... It's a, a real, uh, it, it's a really shameful episode that the media just completely pushed all of this off to the side for months and months and months and months and let Biden get away scot free without ever really having to answer questions about the corruption of his family members, cashing in on his name, and what he would specifically do to make sure that that wasn't going to impact his administration. Of course, Glenn making this exact point. Referring to that, the, the laptop and the Russian disinformation, he says media outlets to justify the re- their refusal to report on the Hunter Biden China documents before the election disseminated two primary claims. One, this was Russian disinformation. They said this has the hallmarks of Russian disinformation, <laughs> whatever bullshit that means. And two, right. the document's authenticity is in doubt. No, actually, they weren't really in doubt. Yeah, it was a weird story about the laptop and the repair shop and whatever. But the Biden people never denied it. They never said, hey, that email, that photo, that whatever that came out is not true, is not accurate, is not authentic. And don't you think if there was an actual issue with the veracity of the emails, they might have said that. Yeah, no, that's uh, it's obvious was what we said 
over and over again. Uh, everybody just wanted to move on. And uh, as we even said at the time, it's not like it was the biggest part of the election. Just it, it'd be honest yeah. about it. Just right. let, you know, it. Be, have it be part of the repertoire of the average voter so that they can make up their minds for themselves. But they were so terrified about Hillary's emails and yeah. all of that that they completely dropped the ball. And I think it's going to come back to bite them because it's very possible that there's a lot more here than we even knew about. Uh, more could come out and you're going to have probably three years, as I know these things you know, draw out, had Whitewater, yeah. then Mueller, now we're going to have Hunter. It's going to drag on and dominate the headlines, and nobody asked for this. But most people weren't prepared. Luckily, we were here, so keep watching Rising. <laughs> All right, we're going to tell you what's on our radar is what's next. <laughs>